What you guys got another video here for you in this one we're taking a look at two options that used to be available to you to recover your system if the system got into trouble i.e you had a registry corruption or you did something wrong with your pc and you wanted to restore it we're going to be taking a look at those two options and what is available to you now uh, in 2024 so first off, let's have a quick look at the first option that used to be available to you, which is now turned off by default, and that is called System Restore. If we type Restore in the uh, search area here and create a Restore point, you'll see by default this is turned off. Now, this never used to be the best option to try to recover Windows, and uh, it is a legacy sort of Restore, but basically... It was a safety net that you could use, and it has worked for me in the past, but it's not perfect. But it was an option that you could use to try to recover Windows if you needed to. Now, I'll show you the other option, and I'm talking about you can re-enable this feature if you wanted to. And we can talk about that in a second after today's word from today's video sponsor. CD key sales. If you're looking for cheap Windows 10 Pro or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM keys, then check out the links in the video description. Head over to CD key sales and create yourself an account and then choose the product you want to purchase and use my promo code here, capital B, capital R, 09, and apply that to your order. Just put it in the promo code box, apply it, and you'll get a 30% discount on all your purchases. Once you submit your order, they will send you your key. You can use that key to either upgrade from Windows 10 Home or Windows 11 Home to Pro, or you can use it to activate your version of Windows once it's installed, just like you see on the screen. Now, the other option was RegBack. Now, RegBack used to be a part of Windows. When you go into this PC, into your C drive and into Windows, and then come down to System32. This was a common area inside here to try and recover Windows. If we go to Config here and then go to RegBack, you'll see it right here. If you go inside here, you'll see that it's empty. And that's because uh, Windows doesn't use this anymore. Now, there is a registry hack that you can use to re-enable the RegBack feature but you will need to go into task scheduler to basically re-enable uh, this option once you do your registry edit you'll be able to go into task scheduler and re-enable this normally it's stored inside here inside your task scheduler but it looks like in this version of windows it has been removed all of a sudden so maybe they're just trying to get rid of it altogether there used to be an option called regback right here in the registry area but it's gone on this version, but I'm on the Insider program here, but on other versions, it was there. But this is where you could recreate a new uh, schedule to basically get that reg back working. If you want to see a video on that, let me know in the comments section down below. It is quite straightforward and easy to re-enable that feature. So why has Microsoft uh, got rid of these options? They've gone down a different route with recovering Windows. So they want you to use... Uh, SFC scan now and they want you to use the DISM commands where you can restore the system that way and they also want you to come into your settings panel here and they want you to go into system and then go down to recovery and these are the options that they want you to use there's an option here to fix problems using Windows updates reinstall your current version of Windows your apps files settings will be preserved this is what they want you to use now and this does work very very well so maybe that's the reason why they made those other two obsolete and stopped them from working but i'm of the idea of having more strings to your bow is good so having more options to recover would be better and more beneficial to you rather than just relying on one option in all honesty, that's, this has worked very, very well at fixing a lot of problems. Now, there's also this area down here called uh, Reset This PC. Now, this has been around for a while. And if you click on this right here, there'll be an option here to keep files, remove apps and settings, but keep your personal files. Again, this has worked pretty well in the past, uh, but there has been failures with this in the past as well 
where it's let you down and you can't use this option. And sometimes remove everything. This will basically remove all your personal files, apps and settings. And you can then reinstall basically Windows using this method. And sometimes these methods have failed. And also this method has failed. And you've had to create a bootable media, which I'll show you right here on Microsoft's website. Sometimes when things get really bad, you have to come onto this website and you have to create your Windows 11 installation media. You need to have a USB flash drive. And what advice people to do is to have this pre-prepared already done just in case something happens. Because I see a lot of people that don't even have a USB flash drive, so they can't even use this option. So when their Windows is completely kaput, and they can't do anything with those features I've showed you. The only other option is to use this option to reinstall Windows from a USB flash drive. And this generally works really well. So this is where you would download your ISO and also create a Windows 11 installation media, which is your media creation tool. So let's talk about these other two options quickly. So the first one was System Restore. If you wanted to re-enable it, all you need to do is type restore here and create a restore point. And sometimes this is quite useful for people that have been, say, tweaking inside their registry, messed up a few settings, and you can go back and basically go back in time and reset that PC. It's quite quick and easy to do. It's not perfect. If your system is really, really bad or you've got corrupt hardware, like, for instance, a bad hard drive, then using System Restore is not really going to help you. Also, if your system has gone beyond recovery, this option is going to be no good to you. But to configure it, all you need to do is basically turn on system restore protection if you wanted to and give it a certain amount. I would say, you know, you want to give it a, a, at least a few percent, right? To make sure you've got enough storage inside here. So maybe 5% will give you three point one seven gigabytes of storage and from there you can delete all your old restore points if you've had it on and you should be deleting these after a while and creating a couple of new ones because you don't want to be restoring back your pc to a time uh, where it's too far back because you will probably end up with issues once you've got it turned on and configured here uh, you've got also this area right here which is your system restore you can see no restore points are enabled because we haven't created one yet so we need to create one and you could do this after you've installed windows which is a really good time to do it so uh, you can put say for instance clean install here and you know that's when uh, you actually installed windows and that was when you created a restore point and you should give them good names like before installing driver for instance so if you install the driver on your system, you should do this before you install a driver. That way you can roll back to a time before you install that driver if it causes an issue during the installation process. This is what this is good for, is doing a system restore point before you do any particular type of uh, installation of a program or installation of a driver or maybe a registry tweak or a registry change or something like that. It's always good to do a system restore point and name it so you know exactly. And what that will do is basically allow you to then go back in here. You can see now it's working and you can see once you see this here, you can get the option here to roll back. And that's why this is still quite useful in 2024. Anyway, that was the system restore point. Now, you can re-enable uh, the regback option inside Windows. And if you want to see a separate video on that, I can do. But I prefer using another option, which is from tweaking.com. And it's called registry backup. Now, there's quite a few different applications you can use to do this uh, reg backup. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to come down here to the installer. This is the free option here. There's a portable one here. But let's go ahead and download the installer here. Let's just consent here. And there we go. I'm just going to quickly download this. There's a few adverts. You just need to close these off. And uh, once that's done, it will start downloading. Okay, so let's go ahead 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go close this off and we'll go to our download section right here and install the application. So with this done, what we're going to do is go next, next again, and we can leave this as is. Go next, and it's going to install this right here for us. So let's go ahead and uh, click next and click finish. There we go. So now this is the actual program. So we're on manual backup right now. This is going to do a, a natural registry backup. So you can see back up your registry. I can back this up if I wanted to, and it's going to back it up. It's that simple. You can view the logs right here. And again, we can restore from this location as well. If you go here, we can now see there is a manual backup right here. So we do have a manual backup and this is our restore option. But there's some settings inside here which you can use. And these settings are for it change the backup location. So if I go to that location where it was backed up, Let's take a look here. It should be inside here, inside your C root directory. And you can see it's called reg backup. Inside here, we do have a registry backup right here. That's simple. And that was done manually, but you've got the option to have this set up as a automatic backup. So you can see auto detect old backups that is enabled. Delete backups seven days or older. Keep at least five backups. So it's going to keep five backups for us, but it's going to delete backups uh, seven days or older. And you can change these options if you want to. And we can run under the current uh, user account or we can run under system account. From here, check for updates at the run of startup. If you wanted to stop that, you just take the tick out. And from here, you can see run options, current user account minimized. That means it's going to be minimized and we have normal or we have hidden. So you can hide it if you want to, and it will do it in the background. This is where the create a schedule is. So let's go ahead and do this right here. And it's done. Now that's going to run automatically for us in the background. And it's going to back up at least five backups. If you want to look at this, you can click on this one right here and it's going to go ahead and it's going to show us the actual schedule that we've created here. This is it right here. Well, the program has created it. We haven't touched it, but right here you can click it and have a look at it. And you can see it's been set up as to run highest privileges, run only when the user is logged on. Let's go to the triggers at log on. And you can double click this and also take a look at the settings that they've set up for their option at log on any user delay the task for five minutes. So when you log on, it's going to delay that for five minutes here. And this has been enabled right here. So let's quickly close this off, go to actions, start the program and it's pointing to start a program and it's pointing to the pro program's location, which is pretty straightforward added the argument of forward slash silent which means it's going to run silently in the background it's not going to disturb you and it's also going to start in the option you can see here the option right here reg backup so that's what that's done and then you've got some conditions that they've set up here and some settings and that's pretty much it so that's ready to go and it will automatically do this on the uh, schedule that we set up in the program but you can quickly run this here let me just quickly run this uh, option right here so you can see it's now running like there and if we go here let me just quickly go back and we'll go into this location here And then we have inside here, we have now free options <laughs> available because we made those backups. It's that simple. We've got the manual one we've done. When I configured the scheduled uh, backup, it automatically done that for us. And then I just did one myself by running it again. So now we have free. And that's it. That's pretty much it. That's how you can save yourself a lot of issues if you're having an issue, use this method and you should be okay. And remember, you still have the other options available. 
which is this fix problems using the Windows updates. Reinstall your current version of Windows. Your apps, files and settings will be preserved. So you can choose which option is available to you at the time. So for instance, if you want to try a quick system restore, you can do. If that doesn't work, you've always got other options available. Or you can just not bother with this at all and just use the newer options. But I do think that it's always best to have a registry backup and it's always good to have, a, you know, a system restore point, even though you might not use it all the time, but it's good for doing it when you're installing, say, a driver or you're installing, say, a program because you never know it could go wrong and you might need to quickly roll back. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you want to see the reg back and enable it by enabling that inside the registry and also task uh, scheduler, let me know and I'll show you how to make that video. It's pretty straightforward and easy to do. But I do think this option is a lot better and it's less involved and you don't have to go in the registry and things like that. It is a third party app, but I think it's a better option for you. Anyway, I just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members, whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three. I do appreciate the support. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.